Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hoekstra. Last week, we had four contests, starting off with from Code Forces Round 506, which was on Friday. On Saturday morning, we had from Code Chef the lunchtime contest, as well as from Top Coder the wildcard round of the TCO 18 tournament. And of course, on Saturday evening, we had our weekly leak code contest number 99. And throughout the week, we had a uh, week-long contest from Hacker Earth, the August Circuits. Taking a look at our top 10 leaderboards, the only individual to place on multiple top 10 leaderboards was Yui, who took first place in the Code Chef Contest Division 1, and also took uh, ninth place in the Leak Code Contest. But we also had a ton of other familiar names. In second place in the Div 1 Code Chef Contest, we had Umnik, and in the Top Coder Contest, we had a bunch of big names. Tourist in first, LHIC in fourth, Scott Wu in fifth, and Petra coming in eighth. In today's video, we're going to be covering problem five from the Hacker Earth August Circuits 2018 contest entitled Nor and His Pond. The problem states nor is going fish farming. There are n types of fish. Each type of fish has size s and eating factor e. A fish with eating factor e will eat all the fish of size less than or equal to e. Help nor to select a set of fish such that the size of the set is maximized as well as they do not eat each other. And note that the constraints for this problem are t the number of test cases are going to be between 1 and 3, uh, n the number of fish per test case are going to be between 1 and 10 to the 5, and s and e are going to be between 1 and 10 to the 9, so integers will do here. And note that for each uh, s and e, for each fish, the size is going to be greater than e. So let's take a look at the uh, example that Hacker Earth provided us with. So here's our input. Our first number here is just t, so that means we have one test case. Uh, n here means we have three fish, and then the size and the eating factor for each fish. So we have three fish here, and uh, you can see here red corresponds to the red fish, blue corresponds to the blue, and so on and so forth. And the, the problem is asking us to find um, what's the largest set of fish that we can put in a pond where they won't be eating each other. So for instance, if we try putting the red and the blue fish in the pond, uh, because the blue fish has an eating factor of four, it's going to eat the red fish because uh, the red fish has a size of four. And so any fish that has a size less than or equal to another fish's eating factor is going to get eaten. So really this red fish would get eaten and you're just going to end up with the blue fish left. Um, however, if we're to try putting the green and the red fish in the same pond, Pond, um, these two fish can happily swim together because uh, neither of them having e have an eating factor that's greater than uh, the other size. And this is in fact going to be the solution for this input. Uh, so uh, the answer would be two here. And that's, yeah, that's how the problem works. So how do we go about solving this problem? So initially upon reading this problem, it wasn't uh, exactly clear on how to solve this problem. But my first thought was that, you know, sort was probably involved. And so there's two reasons why I thought that. One is that uh, our constraints on our input. So n, the number of fish in each of our test cases is going to be uh, 10 up, can be up to 10 to the fifth. Um, and as previously stated in other videos, uh, per second, and this is a one second problem, we have roughly up to 10 to the eight operations. Uh, meaning that if we had a quadratic algorithm, we'd end up with 10 to the 10 operations and we'd time out. So uh, we're going to need to do uh, at least as good as n log n. And whenever you hear n log n or think of n log n in your head, you, th you should think of sort because that's the complexity of sort. The second thing uh, that made me think sort was involved is that this problem inherently um, involves comparing numbers. So you need to compare fish's sizes with other fish's eating factors. Um, so whenever you have this sort of comparison of one number that needs to be less than or greater than another number, that usually um, can, it can be indicative of sorting. So uh, with this in mind, uh, let's see if we can find a way to sort, and then we can use a sweeping algorithm where we just we make a single pass from left to right or right to left and see if we can identify the uh, valid uh, fish uh, if they're next to each other in a certain way. So now that we're thinking about sort, uh, let's see how we can sort these fish. So we'll notice that already uh, in our input here, we are 
uh, given our fish in sorted order of size. Um, but note that the red and green fish that end up in our optimal set of fish are not next to each other. And because we're trying to use a sweeping algorithm uh, where we identify the valid set uh, with uh, fish that are adjacent to each other, um, this isn't going to work. And, and just to clarify, the reason that we want the valid uh, fish to be adjacent to each other is because if they're not, it's going to be hard to get a linear runtime algorithm um, because if, if they're, you know, there's fish, fish that are not in the valid set, we're going to end up having to go back, you know, either with recursion or some sort of quadratic algorithm. But if they're all next to each other and we can just use a single pass algorithm, you know, typically we can do this in uh, linear runtime. Um, so the other option of sorting them is to sort them by uh, our eating factor. And so if we do that, we'll notice that the red and the green fish do end up next to each other. So let's see uh, with a more complicated example if we can use an algorithm where we sort the fish by their eating factor and then one by one add the fish to the pond. And then any time we add a new fish, with a certain eating factor, we can check are there any fish that are currently in the pond with uh, a size less than that new eating factor because we know because the, f the fact that they are sorted in uh, terms of their eating factor that when we ever add a new fish, that new fish is gonna have the biggest eating factor. So we can just remove any of the fish that uh, have an eating factor less than the uh, sort of new fishes. And once we've done this, for each fish that we add, we can just keep a running total of what was the greatest set that we've seen so far. So let's take a look at a more complicated example. So you can see here that I've just added two fish, a uh, yellow fish with the same size as blue, but a smaller eating factor, and a gray fish that has the biggest size and the biggest eating factor. So we're gonna start by adding our uh, red fish that has the smallest eating factor, and so here we have a set, a valid set of one. Then we'll add the yellow fish. Uh, this has an eating factor of two, which is smaller than uh, the red fish. So now we have a valid set of two fish. Then we're going to try adding the green fish. Once again, uh, the eating factor of this new green fish is three, which is still smaller than all of the fish in our uh, pond. So now we have a valid set of three fish. Now we get to the point where we add the uh, blue fish. And at this point, the blue fish has an eating factor of four, which means that the blue fish is going to eat the red fish. So the red fish disappears. And at this point, we still have a valid set of three fish. So three is the biggest set that we've seen so far. And at this point, when we add our last fish, the gray fish, this fish is going to eat all of the remaining uh, fishies because they all have sizes five, seven, and five, and the gray fish has an eating factor of seven. So they're all gone. So the solution to this problem is going to be uh, the number three, because that's the biggest set we saw. So the only other um, you know, trick to doing this uh, efficiently is how to keep track of the sizes of the fish in your pond. And uh, there's a data structure that's called a multi-set, which is basically a set but it just allows for duplicates and this is going to store your uh, fish sizes or whatever you put in them in sorted order so each insertion is going to be log n so it'll increase our uh, line sweep from linear to n log n but that's still going to be good enough to pass this problem so making use of um, the multi-set will give us an efficient way to keep track of the sizes of the fish in this pond so with all that said let's take a look at the code for this problem so here is our C++ solution. Uh, you can hear, you can see here at the top just a little bit of boilerplate. Uh, we've got our defined macro for 4i, and then this PII just stands for a pair of ints. And so at the top of our function here, we're reading in t the number of test cases. Then we're going to loop for each t, read in our n, which is going to be the number of fish. Then we declare a vector of pairs, which is going to store the information for each fish. And we're going to dimension this to have uh, n elements in it. And then we're going to read in uh, to each of the elements in our vector of pairs um, our size and our uh, eating factor. And note that we're putting the eating factor um, in the first of our pair because the way the pair has implicitly a less than comparison 
um, implemented for it, but it compares first by first and then by second, uh, which makes sense. Um, but because we want to sort by the eating factor, which um, in our input comes second, we want to read it in backwards. So first put the size in second and then put the eating factor in first. Uh, then we sort the uh, fish based on this and then we declare our multi-set which is just going to store the sizes of the fish in our pond um, then we are going to initialize uh, our answer to be equal to uh, the current size which is just going to be zero and then we're going to loop through for each of our fish which have been sorted by their eating factors and so the first thing we do is we're going to insert that fish into our pond and then uh, based on the eating factor of our current fish, so that's going to be uh, e dot first. Um, we are just going to remove any fish. So we have a while loop here, and you know the begin the first fish in our multi set is going to be the one with the smallest size. Uh, so while this is true, we just want to erase that element, and we can continue to do this, and it'll erase each of our fish that have a uh, size that is smaller than our current eating factor. And note, uh, I had. Uh, Dennis review this so once again thanks to Dennis uh, and he pointed out that we can use uh, m dot erase and just do this all at once by finding the iterator that is just past uh, the last fish that has a size less than our uh, current eating factor so either way um, they both work and uh, after this we just set our answer to be equal to the maximum of our current answer and the current size of our multiset and so once you do this you have your answer and you can just output it so uh, there's a lot to sort of know going into this problem but if you have all this sort of you know knowledge in your head about multisets and about sorting uh, it's actually a pretty simple problem to solve so last thing to talk about uh, is the time complexity for this problem which is going to be driven by uh, our t test cases and then their n log n for our sort and then also this insertion here is going to be n log n uh, so we're just going to end up with uh, big o of t times n log n so i do have one more solution for you guys um, but this is more of a learning exercise or maybe even an argument for why you should switch to c instead of using a language such as java uh, because in going from this c solution that i originally wrote uh, to uh, java there was a number of things missing that made the problem or the solution slightly more difficult to implement so let's take a look at the java solution so here is the Java solution, and you can see right away that there are uh, a number of lines uh, more than compared to our C++ solution uh, due to several reasons. So I'll start by listing out um, sort of what's not available in Java that is available in C++. So number one, there's no pair. Uh, so we were able to make use of the you know, implicitly uh, declared comparison of, of our pairs and then just use a sort on a vector of pairs. Um, we don't have that in Java, so you either need to use uh, like a map of two integers or a array list of array lists. Um, I chose to go for the map of integers of integers, which I shouldn't have done because, uh, as you know, you can't have multiple uh, keys of the same uh, value. Um, so this solution actually is only going to pass 50% of the test cases anytime you have a test case that has a duplicate uh, eating factor of the fish is it's going to fail so uh, you know you have to use an alternative when you don't have pair uh, we don't have a multi-set so the workaround for that is to use a tree map where the key is the size of your fish and the value is the count or the frequency of uh, that fish with that size um, this you know it works but it's not as convenient because on top of that we need to know the total number of fish in our pond so we need to declare a local variable uh, which tracks the current fish in the pond and whenever we add a fish we do a increment and whenever we remove a fish uh, due to have a, you know a fish with an eating factor greater than it eating all of them we have to do a minus equals on the number of uh, the fish with that size um, so not as equal not as easy as just being able to go you know multi set dot size 
the third thing is that iterators aren't baked in. This isn't a huge deal, and this is pretty well known in C++. In between the data structures and the algorithms is this iterator layer, which makes you know removing elements uh, pretty simple. But in Java, it requires a, li a little bit more you know explicit syntax where you're declaring this iterator. Uh, and then able to remove it, whereas that's sort of baked in. You get that for free in C++. And uh, the last but not least, uh, var is not available in Java 8, uh, which means that you end up writing out or typing out you know, this monstrosity here. Um, in pre-C++11, you would end up doing things like this as well, you know, vector, uh, int, colon, colon, iterator, uh, you'd have to type that out. But now we have auto in C++ 11 and 14, which is what most of the contest sites have. Um, and uh, Java does have an equivalent of this coming in Java 10 called var. So I believe in Java 10, you'll be able to write, you know, var f, and it'll just infer the type based on what's on the right side of the equal sign. But that's not there yet. Uh, and most of the sites only have Java 8 available. So uh, it's not the end of the world that we don't have these things, but it just makes uh, you know implementing this solution a little bit more difficult. So quickly walking through this, we read in T the same way we do in uh, the C++ solution, then we read in end. Uh, we are going to store the size and the eating factor in a map of integers, uh, you know, where the key and value are both integers. This is a fail. And uh, note that the uh, key is going to be the eating factor and the value is going to be the uh, size. And then for keeping track of the uh, fish that are, the sizes of the fish that are in the pond, we also have a map of integers where the key is going to be the size and the value is going to be the number of uh, fish with this size. Then we are going to read in our size and our eating factor and then we are going to you know put this into our map. Then we declare our two locals, C and our answer, uh, which is going to represent the current fish in the pond and the current you know, maximum that we've seen so far. Then we're going to loop through using an enhanced for loop. Um, and we're going to do a post increment to our uh, fish uh, count C. And then we're going to get the size of our current fish. And we are going to uh, put this into our map. And then note that we have to make sure that we're not overwriting the existing fish. So if it already contains uh, a fish with this size, then we need to get how many fish have that size. Uh, and we'll store this in a variable x and then add one to that. If there aren't any, we'll just be adding uh, one to zero, so adding one fish. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of our fish in our pond. And while they have a size less than our eating factor, we want to uh, minus equals that number of fish currently with that size from the number of fish in our pond and then remove that uh, element from our map. Um, and then we do our sort of reset of answer if uh, the current size of our pond or number of fish in our pond is greater. So it's very similar to our C++ solution. It just takes a lot more work. Um, and as I said, this solution actually fails because we should be using like an array of arrays or something like that, um, which I didn't realize until you know the end and i've spent too long making this video so i figured i'd just you know post what i had so far um, but like i said before if you know a more idiomatic or concise or you know just better way to implement this java solution please let me know in the comment section down below uh, i would love to uh you know learn more um, and just generally about this problem, like I think this kind of problem is a very, very good problem to ask in an interview setting. These are the kinds of problems that you see that, you know, they, it re one requires uh, you to have knowledge of time complexity, um, and two, it, it requires you to have knowledge of algorithms such as your, your sort, and three, it requires you to have knowledge of data structures, whether that in Java is your tree map, or uh, in C++, that's your vector and your multi-set so uh, questions like these where they have really short statements they're easy to understand but you know um, slightly more complicated to implement are really really uh, common questions that you're going to see in interviews taking a look at the contest happening next week uh, believe it or not, we only have the weekly lead code contest, at least announced currently. There is a Code Forces contest tomorrow around 9.30, but it's not a typical, uh, you know, round or educational contest, which is why you don't see it posted. Uh, so unless of Code Forces updates their schedule, um, you only have one contest to look forward to. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.